you might have understood that how to use SPSS to analyze the data with the help of t-test and one-way ANOVA. Today, I am going to tell you some more statistical techniques. So, I have another file. I have already entered the data and by now, you might have understood that how to enter the data. Okay, let us proceed further. So, I first click on Analyze and you know compare means here independent samples t-test. This you can see is here. You can use it. You can also use one-way ANOVA. Now, I will tell you some other. So, next icon after compare mean is general linear model. Let us go to general linear model. You get a icon univariate. So, click on the univariate. You get a dialog box. In this, it is written dependent variable. The next is fixed variables. Next is random factors. Next is covariate. Next is WLS weights. Now, we suppose I want to study the self-efficacy means. So, I shift self-efficacy in the dependent variable column. Now, in the fixed column, suppose I want locale of school as one variable. Say gender is another variable. Now, so here, you know, there is one criterion variable that is self-efficacy and there are two other variables. Locale of school is one, gender is another. So, this analysis you already know will be called two-way analysis of variance because there are two variables. One is locale of school, another is gender. Another name will be 2 by 2 factorial design analysis of variance because Locale of school has two levels and gender has two levels. So, this you have understood. Now, on your right hand side, there are many icons. In the bottom is option. Let us click on the option. You can see that on your left hand side dialog box, there are some names written like overall locale of school, gender, locale of school, interaction, gender. If I want the mean of all these things, then I can select. I hope you know how to select. Now, I shift it on the right hand side dialog box, clicking on the arrow. Now, if you see down, here it is written display and under this, there are many options. The first option is descriptive statistics. That means mean, standard deviation, etc. I want for all these variables, this information, so I can click on it. If I don't want any other, I proceed further. When I go down, you just see at the end is significance level and by default it is 0 0.05 level. So, if you want to change it, then you can click here, the cursor comes and you can change it to 0 0.01. So, choice is yours because the package always gives you significance level as 0 0.05 level. But any point of time you want to change, you can change it. 
So suppose I want to still keep it as 0 0.05 because that is the lowest one. So I continue. So I can bring my cursor on the continue, click it here. Proceed further. Next icon is save. I don't want to save anything. Go ahead. So I cancel it. Next is post hoc. Post hoc test is to be used whenever you have a variable which has more than two levels. In this case, locale of school has two levels and gender also has two levels. So therefore, we need not to use post hoc multiple comparison. Okay. So therefore, I can say cancel. Next is plot. You can see this plot because you have two variables. So there may be a interaction between them. And if it is a interaction, then as a researcher, you may be interested in finding out the influence of interaction on self-efficacy. So I click on the plot. And you can see on the dialog box that on the left hand side there is a word factor and under this you have both the variables. Locale of school is one, gender is another. On your right hand side there is a horizontal axis, one slot, another is separate lines and another is separate plots. Now, since we have only two variables here, so one of the variable I can shift it to the horizontal axis and the other I can shift it to the separate lines. I am presuming that you know how to plot the graph. And if you do not know, please understand that first plotting of the graph. Now, if I shift the locale of school on the horizontal axis, I have a choice. If I don't want to have locale of school on the horizontal axis, I can shift gender, no problem at all. So, suppose I want locale of school here, then I have shifted. Now, you can see the moment locale of school shifted on the right hand side, the arrow reversed. That means if you want to further bring local in school on the left hand side dialog box, you can do it. Now, the separate lines is for gender. So, I click on the gender and I bring it on the separate lines. Now, once you have done this, now you should add. If you will not add, then the graph will not come. So, you add it here. Now, you continue. So, now I have done everything. I need not to proceed further. Now, I can click on OK. So, you have the output of this analysis on your screen. I scroll it down so that you can see it completely. That first is between subjects factor. Next is descriptive statistics. Next table is tests of between subjects effect. Next is estimated marginal means that is grand mean and everything, all these type of the things are there and you take whatever information that you require to interpret your result. Now you can see the graph also, it is here. So this is how two-way analysis is to be used. You have already understood one-way analysis of variance. Now you have understood two-way analysis of variance. Let us also try the three-way analysis of variance. Yes, you can tell me that we first 
to go to analyze click now we again come to general linear model as soon as we come on the right hand side there is a icon univariate i click it here the dialog box will come now if i want to change the variable i can say resets so on your right hand side there is nothing now i can enter the data whatever i want suppose for the dependent variable if i want emotional competence i select and shift it in the dependent list next i want suppose types of school first i can select suppose next you want gender i can shift suppose next you want the groups we can shift so under fixed factor i have three variables so this will be called three way analysis of variance types of school has three levels gender has two levels groups has two levels so another name for is this will be 3 by 2 by 2 analysis factorial design analysis of variance i repeat this will be 3 by 2 by 2 factorial design analysis of variance okay fine now i again proceed first go to the options i want mean of everything so i can select all at one shift on the right hand side all dialog box under display if i want statistics i click here and without changing significance level i continue now if i want post hoc test i know the types of school has got three levels so if f value for types of school is significant then it will mean that the means differ significantly now which type of schools students mean is significantly higher for that you have to use what we call post hoc test so i can shift types of school on the right hand side dialog box as soon as it is shifted you have seen that equal variances assumed under that there are many options they become active i again demonstrate now there is nothing in the right hand side dialog box so here equal variance is assumed is not active you try to click you cannot click but the moment i shift the variable in the right hand dialog box immediately equal variance is assumed is active and you can say there are so many options these are six and these are six so 12 options and some are here suppose i am interested in using duncan's multiple range test please try to study duncan's multiple range test from a book the reference is experimental design by alan edward it's a very nice book so you will understand duncan's multiple range test after selecting it i can say continue now next i can go to the plot now here you will find different combinations of these variables so there will be different plots so on the horizontal line 
if I want types of scrolls because it will have three points because there are three types of school. The separate lines if I want to have gender, I can select gender and shift it on it. So this will give me the interaction between types of school and gender and I add it. So this is the one interaction. Another is I shift types of school here and separate lines I can say groups. So this is groups. So this will give me another interaction term and this will be the interaction between types of school and groups. So I can bring the cursor to the add and I can add it. So I have done two interactions. Now the third interaction will be between gender and groups. If I decide gender to be on the horizontal line and groups to be on the separate lines, so I can shift on this side. So this will be the interaction between gender and groups. I can add it. Now these are the three interactions where you are taking one to two variables. And this will be the first order interaction. So there will be three first order interactions. Now there will be second order interactions. Now we shift the types of school on the horizontal axis and say gender on the separate lines and groups on the separate plot. So this will be the second order interaction I can shift and you can see it is here. So basically there will be four graphs. Now please remember that if you have four variables then there will be another interaction and that will be among the four variables. But this particular software has a limitation that it can only give you the graphs when you have maximum three factors. If you have four factors or five factors, then graph cannot be plotted. So that is the limitation of it. So if you have more factors, then well, if some of the higher order interactions are significant then you have to plot a graph and sometime plotting graph of higher will be difficult. So take your own decision. I will recommend that if you have the three variables so you can use it but four variables I think you should not use this because it cannot plot the graph. I continue. So I have done everything. I need not to proceed further contrast and model. I can say OK. Now here is your output. So I can just scroll it down to show you the output. You know, the these things are there. You need not to bother about it. That's fine. Nice. If you read, you will understand. It's not very difficult. So I click it here. This is univariate analysis of variance. Okay, this is important. So now you have the between between subjects factor. Then you have descriptives. Okay, here number is less. So therefore certain analysis might not have been done. So it is uh, so you know all these type of the things. So you can scroll and you can see the graph. And this is because in one of the factors, the number of observations are very small. So let me repeat it again to have another variable in place of one particular variable. I know which it is. Say go to analyze. 
go to general linear model, go to univariate. In this, uh, I am changing the gender. I don't want gender. Say, I want the types of uh, the management of scores. So, find nines. I go to options. I can again click because I have changed the variables. So, click and shift on this side. Descriptives is okay. I say continue. I go to the post, post hoc is fine. I don't want to change because management is only two level. So that's uh, fine, nice. I say continue and then go to the plot. Yes. Here I need to change, say, types of school here, groups is here. So I add. Next is types of schools and see management of schools. This is another one. Good. If I want management of schools on the horizontal and groups here, then this is your. So these three are the first order interactions. I go here and shift. If I want management here, shift, separate plot, shift. This you can decide which variable you want to put in which one. I say continue and I say continue. So therefore, this is your analysis. So I have demonstrated two times how to do the analysis of variance. And this is the three-way analysis of variance. Well, fine, nice. That's okay. It uh, this is because of the number of observations. You can I can show you once again that why this is happening. That if you see here, you see here that in control group. It is government scores, there is only one. So it's because of that. So that means I should not have taken this variable. That's fine, nice, no problem at all. So now you can do one way ANOVA, two way ANOVA, three way ANOVA. You can also do T test. Let us try ANCOVA. So go to analyze and you cannot find anywhere analysis of covariance. This is important because the names here are slightly different because they can't change. Names are not variable. So therefore, you can't change it. So go to univariate. Let me reset. Now, here you can see that on your right left right hand side there is a dependent variable column then fixed factor then random factor and here is a covariate so suppose if i want to take emotional competence as a dependent variable and i want the let us say locales of school as a fixed one and if I want covariate, say self-efficacy as covariate, so I can shift it here. Now, if I go ahead, this will be called one-way analysis of covariance. Please understand, in the output, you will not find a heading like covariance, okay? Why it is called one-way? Because there is only one variable under fixed factor which has two levels. So if I have only one variable under fixed factor, my covariate may be 1, may be 2, may be 3. So it is still be called as one way analysis of covariance. Okay, I proceed. Say options. Now here I can click select all one together, bring them on the right hand side dialog box, go to display, say descriptives and continue. Now here I just see post hoc is hidden 
because there are two levels so it cannot do the analysis you cannot plot because only one variable the fixed factor is one if there are two then it is possible so we proceed and if we proceed now just see here title is univariate analysis of variance in reality you have done analysis of covariance but the heading is because it is static heading it's not variable so therefore do not bother about these but when you write then you should not write like this you should use one way analysis of covariance now here different informations are there and you have these mean now under descriptive statistics the information of mean and standard deviation and n is given and this mean is your original mean understand this is important now this for rural area the mean of emotional competence is 124.9724 for urban area 129.6134 go down here is your tests of between subjects effect now here are different values so fine i scroll it down now just see here is estimated marginal means first is the grand mean now if you see under mean here it is 128.446 and here it is a you can see the superscript a a means it is adjusted now you go down here it is 2 by 2 if you see rural area this mean is 120.468 this is the adjusted mean now the original mean i will just scroll little bit up the original mean for the emotional competence so the rural area is 124.972 after adjustment this mean became you can see it has come down to 120.4 so this is what is adjustment so in analysis of covariance we should not use simple mean we must use adjusted means so when you are interpreting the results of one way analysis of covariance that the means to be used are these adjusted means so for rur in case of rural area the adjusted mean of emotional competence is 120.468 for urban it is 136.465 so your mean either can go up or can come down when it is going up and coming down with respect to your original means that is adjustment so i hope you have understood this point and then we so these are your analysis so this is how you can use spss to analyze your data with the help of one way analysis of covariance let us see how to use one two way analysis of covariance and you can have one covariate or two covariates no problem choice is yours so again after clicking analyze go to general linear model now come to univariate the same dialog box say i reset and suppose i want to have dependent as burnt out so burn out i can shift here in the fixed factor if suppose i want locale of school and types of school 
fine no problem i can do that now i have to have covariate now suppose i say self efficacy as one covariate and emotional emotional competence as another covariate so now in this case in the dependent variable you have one variable that is burned out in the fixed factors you have two variables one is locale of score another is types of score you can see locale of score has two levels and types of score has three levels so therefore this analysis you can say but before that see your covariates are here too one covariate is self efficacy another covariate is emotional competence since we have covariates and we have in the fixed factor two variables so because of these fixed factors we can say it is two way analysis of covariance so two way is because under fixed factor we have two variables we may have covariate 1 2 3 whatever it is but this particular analysis name will be two way analysis of covariance okay fine let us go to options now i want mean and adjusted mean of all these i shift it on the display means i go to display and say descriptive this you have understood now since we have two variables one is locale of school another is types of school so definitely there will be a plot now in the horizontal line because the types of school are three so i can shift it on the horizontal line locale of school is two i can have a separate lines now i add so this is the only one interaction so there will be only one graph now i continue okay now i further continue now this is the output for two way analysis of covariance but understand once again here name is univariate analysis of variance so don't bother about these names now if you scroll it down which i am doing you can say that between subject factor next is descriptive statistics all means given under descriptive statistic these are original means you scroll it down then it is tests of between subjects effect from here only you will make your table and which will be summary of analysis of covariance in this case since it is two way so you can say summary of an of two way analysis of covariance and whatever is the your variable that fine nice so i can scroll it down now here you can see that under rural these are the means and a is there It means these are adjusted means once again if you like i can show you for rural area adjusted mean is 111.511 i scroll it up and you will see that for rural area okay the mean is 106.2983 that means this has shifted up so this is adjustment so coming down or going up is adjustment 
and this is because of the covariates which we have taken. So I am scrolling it down, your output you can see. See this is the graph and this is the graph where on the x-axis you have your types of score. The separate lines you have this for the blue is rural area, green is urban area. So if you want you can select it and you can control and see so you are selected and you can paste it anywhere you like so you need not to redraw this particular graph all right you proceed so i have demonstrated how to analyze data with the help of one with the help of one way analysis of covariance two way analysis of covariance one way analysis of covariance with minimum one covariate or you can have two or three whatever you like let me lastly explain you here the three way analysis of covariance even if i do not explain you are intelligent people you can do it yourself so go to general linear model then univariate then the dialog box come here I can shift one more variable and say if I am shifting say gender or let us say management of scores I am shifting management of scores. So here my dependent variable burnt out in the fixed factor I have three variables is locale of school types of school and management of scores. And covariate I have two. So I am not changing, just demonstrating perfectly correct. Go to options. Since I have entered one more variable, so I can select it. Okay, I can select everything and shift here. Descriptives is already highlighted, so need not to bother. Go to continue. Yes, I go to the plot because you have three variables, so there will be more plot. One I have already done, which is types of school and locale of school. Suppose now next I do types of school and management of school. Okay, I add. So types of school and locale of school I have done, then types of school and management of schools. Now I say locale of schools and, and types of school I have done. So locale of school and management of school I should do. These are the three combinations of two to variable. So these are the first order interaction. Now I have the types of school as horizontal lines, say local as a separate lines and management as a separate plot and I add. So these will be the four interactions. Three interactions will be of the first order and the sec fourth interaction will be of the second order. So there are three first order interaction and one second order interaction I continue I say okay now here is your result see so fast it can analyze your data I scroll it down you can see the different outputs here now you know what all these outputs are there and that's fine these are your graphs you can see it very well all these graphs are there sometimes graphs looks very nice but important is for the graph if the f value is not significant then you cannot interpret the graph this is important graphs are to be interpreted and integrated with the 
interpretation only if the f value for the interaction is significant. I hope you understand these points. Let us move it how to do correlation. So I go to analyze. Can you see correlate? Yes, I hope you can. Under general linear model, if you go to next, it is correlate. And if you bring your cursor here on your right hand side, there are three icons. One is bivariate, another is partial, another is distance. I want to do bivariate. I hope you understand the meaning of bivariate means the correlation between two variables at a time. I click here. Now here is your dialog box on the right hand side where variables is written. Suppose I am interested in finding the correlation between self-efficacy and emotional competence. If I want only these two then I can shift it under variable dialog box, go to option. Here it is statistics that is, do you want mean and standard deviation for these two variables? If the answer is yes, you can click it. Do you want cross product deviations and covariance? If you want, you can. But you must know whether you need or you don't need it. If you think you don't understand, then you need not to highlight it. Then it will not give you the values. But if you really want to use it, then you can highlight it. Okay, go ahead, continue. Now, by default, they have Pearson. There are three. One is Pearson, another is Candles, another is Spearman. You must be very clear when to use Pearson, when to use Candles, when to use Spearman. Now, by default, it is Pearson. And you know, it is Pearson product movement correlation. Okay. And you know the different conditions to be satisfied by the data before you analyze it using Pearson product movement correlation. I am not going to tell you that because I have already explained that. Okay. We, after that, we continue. But before we say okay, under test of significance, you know, there are two-tailed and one-tailed. I hope under hypothesis, you have already studied that there are one tailed test and two tailed test. Now by default they have highlighted as two tailed test. In short I will tell you if you have formulated your hypothesis in the null form then you must use a two tailed test. But if you have formulated your hypothesis in the directional form then you cannot use two tail test, you must use the one tail test. So then, in that case, you can click on one tail test. In one data, either you can use one tail or two tail, you can't use both. Okay. So suppose, since I have the hypothesis in the null form, so I continue with the two tail. Okay. Now, below is flag significant correlations. So, whenever your correlation is significant, it will highlight it by putting extra. So, here it is. If you don't want, by default, it is active. But if you want, you can keep it. If you want to change, you can change it. But it's there is no harm even if it you keep it fine. I say okay. This is so fast analysis has come. Now in this one, this is your descriptive statistics where your mean standard deviation n are there. Below this is correlation. So you can see it is the, the correlation of self-efficacy 
with the emotional competence is 0 0.610. And below this, you see, second is significance, two tailed. Now, here it is 0 0.000, which means this value is significant at 0 0.01 level. And below this is your N. Now, when you interpret this correlation, then you should know the degree of freedom. So, from this, you can calculate the degree of freedom. From 300, you can minus 2 and do it. These are simple things you understand. Okay. Now, another is see emotional competence. So, you can see that below this now is emotional competence. So, the correlation between emotional competence and self-efficacy is 0 0.610. So, either you can say the correlation between self-efficacy and emotional competence or you can say correlation between emotional competence and self-efficacy. It's one of the same thing. Either you say this variable first and this second, it's okay, fine, nice. So, this is your correlation. So, from here, you can interpret. Suppose I go again to analyze and go to correlate and go to bivariate. Suppose I want the correlation amongst these three. That means I want correlation between self-efficacy and emotional competence self-efficacy and burnt out, emotional competence and burnt out because these are the three combinations of two two variable. Okay, go to options. I have already highlighted fine. So, if you have five variables, so you can find out the correlation amongst all five just by one click. It is so simple. These are the outputs of the correlation. So, I hope you now know how to use SPSS for analyzing data using correlation. Okay. Mind its product movement correlation. Okay. Let us proceed further. Say analyze. I go to correlate. Now, suppose I want to do partial correlation. I have already explained you the partial correlation. Suppose these self-efficacy, emotional competence and burnt out. Suppose these three variables are interrelated. I want to find out the partial correlation between self-efficacy and emotional competence by controlling for burnt out. So, burnt out, I can shift it here. So, I am now finding out the partial correlation between self-efficacy and emotional competence by partialing out the effect of burnt out. This is important. So, you can partial out or you can control as many variables as you like. But the correlation will always be between two and you can control as many variables. Now, go to option. Here, mean and standard deviation you want, okay, then continue. And here, two-tailed, fine, you continue. Now, here, you say, here it is partial, C O double R. C O double R is the abbreviation for correlation. So, this is partial correlation. Now, the first is the descriptive statistics. Let us move the cursor down and here, you know, this here it is written correlation. Actually, this is partial correlation. But don't mind because these are static titles. These are not dynamic. So, you can't change. Now, here you can see that when you are controlling burnt out, then you are finding the correlation between self-efficacy and emotional competence and this is and this correlation minus 0.187 is the partial correlation between self-efficacy and emotional competence by partialing out the effect of burnt out or by controlling the con 
this variable burnt out okay so this is with one with uh, by partialing out one variable if i want go go to correlate and go to partial i can control more than one say resilience if i want to control so this will be the correlate partial correlation between self efficacy and emotional competence by partialing out the effect of burnt out and resilience so i can continue and say okay so this is your output so you can see this is the partial correlation between self efficacy and emotional competence which is minus 0.154 by controlling or by partialing out the effect of burnt out and resilience so you can partial out or you can control statistically as many variables as you like let me lastly demonstrate how to analyze data with the help of regression analysis so i am going to regression analysis there are different we want linear so we click it the linear suppose my dependent variable here if i want self efficacy so i can click it here understand before analyzing the data using spss you should be very sure about your different variables so if self efficacy you want to have under dependent and emotional you want to have under independent and burnt burnt out you want to have under independent then here you will get the answer of many questions let me first analyze and then later on tell you options you don't want anything whatever this perfectly correct continue plot nothing statistics now by default it is already estimates and model fit if you want r square value you can have if you want descriptives you can have if you want part and partial correlations so you can have absolutely no problem so continue now say continue now say here is your output here you get the descriptive statistics next you get different correlations amongst the variable okay then it is variables uh, entered and removed so we have entered and then i scroll it down now see this is the first model summary in this if you see the model one don't bother about it in the next column is capital r capital r means this is the multiple correlation okay and this multiple correlation is between the variables okay and this is the because my dependent variable in this particular case if i have forgotten don't worry you can see here your dependent is self efficacy if you go little up here also dependent is self efficacy okay that means this capital r means it is the joint contribution of variable burnt out and emotional competence in predicting self efficacy so this is the joint contribution and if you square this value this comes the next is r square so if you square 0.976 then its square will be 0.953 and if you multiply it by 100 it will be 95.3 
so that means the joint contribution of burnt out and emotional competence in predicting self efficacy is 95.3% and this r square value is significant say here significant and it is significant at 0.01 because here it is written 0.000 so therefore one information from here you can get about the multiple correlation second information you will get about c the third is coefficients here is beta coefficients so you have two predictors emotional competence its beta coefficient is minus 0.054 your burnt out beta coefficient minus 1.011 now from these beta coefficients you know the first beta coefficient the t value is minus 3.278 you have already understood that t value is always positive so even here they are writing negative so but when you have to report you report it as a positive because t value is the difference between the means and the difference is always positive now next you see that minus 3.278 is significant it is 0.001 the second is the burnt out the beta coefficient is minus 1.011 and this is also significant because the t value is 60.843 here i am not reading minus so it is significant at point 0 so that means emotional competence and burnt out contribute significantly in prediction of self efficacy if you are interested in finding out the percentage contribution then of emotional competence then the beta coefficient for emotional competence is minus 0.054 and the correlation between emotional competence and self efficacy is 0.610 so if you find the co product of beta coefficient minus 0.054 and 0.613 and multiplied by 100 this will give you the individual percentage contribution of emotional competence in predicting self efficacy similarly you can find out the percentage contribution of burnt out in predicting self efficacy and for that you multiply this beta coefficient minus 1.011 with the zero order correlation that is minus 0.976 and then multiplied by 100 so this will give you the individual contribution of emotional competence and burnt out in predicting the self efficacy the last in this is that now you can write a regression equation for writing regression equation you need constant its value is here under unstandardized coefficients so b is here actually it is regression coefficient but they are writing b no problem the for emotional competence your regression coefficient is minus 0.029 and burnt out is minus 0.637 you have to use three values to write the equation which i have already done so you can do it yourself let us see how to use chi square because most of us are very 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 scary and sometime we do use chi squares okay so let us see how do we use chi square okay now go to the analyze and go to non parametric statistics 
and here you can see your chi-square. Now, if you want to analyze your data for this chi-square, suppose you want to find out for the reaction because there are three options. Shift it to the test variable, go to option. You can't have descriptive because the variable is on the nominal scale, so you can't calculate. And we click. Now, you have here, say, chi-square test frequencies. For agree, there are 24 cases, neutral 12 cases, disagree 12 cases, so your chi-square value is 6.00. Your degree of freedom is 2 and your level of significance is 0 0.05. So that means this chi-square value is significant. Now this is one way. Now if you want two, then how to proceed? This is little bit difficult. So concentrate and see. First we go to analyze. Then we go to descriptive statistics. And here we go to cross tab. I repeat. First, go to descriptives. Then, on your right hand side, you get some uh, names. Under that, the fourth is cross tab. C R O double -S, S T A B S. So, cross tabs, just click it here. Now, you know that both variables are discontinuous variables. So, I can shift, say, gender here and I can shift, say, reaction here and say, statistics. Now, just see here, nothing is highlighted. So, you want chi-square, click it and continue. So, in this case, it will give you the two-way analysis, two analysis of chi-square. So, that is the one or this is also called contingency coefficient of the chi-square. Okay, fine. So, you go, now you can see. Here, your male is there, your females are there. These are the under cross tabs and chi-square value is here 2.902. So, when you have two variables, then also you can do the chi-square, but you will not get under non-parametric statistic. For that, you have to go to descriptives. I repeat again, go to analyze, go to descriptives and in the descriptives, you will find cross tab, go click here and proceed. I close here to wish you best of luck and I hope now you can explore SPSS yourself. Thank you very much.